The MSR D4S V2 has been updated with a new dual channel driver, which offers some exciting new features that add greater versatility and even more customizability to the light. This new driver has two independent channels, which allow for two distinct sets of LEDs to work together as either a tint ramping or a channel switching flashlight. Both the emitters and the firmware can be selected as desired when purchasing the light. The tint ramping version uses two sets of emitters with different color temperatures, and allows for smooth ramping between the two as a means of setting the desired color temperature. This light has two sets of Nietzsche 219B LEDs in 2700K and 4500K color temps. This allows for ramping the light from neutral white to warm white, or setting it anywhere in between. After the temperature is set, the output can then be ramped as desired. The set temperature can also be memorized. This tint ramping style basically allows for a completely custom tint mix, and any two LEDs can be used to dial in the perfect beam, which can be easily changed as desired. The channel switching firmware allows for an instant swap between the two channels, and is useful when selecting emitters that offer contrasting throwy and floody beams, or white and colored emitters, for a sort of two-in-one multi-purpose flashlight. This version of the firmware will only operate either one or the other channel, not both simultaneously. This switching version will be preferred for some configurations, as the beams may not mix together very well, and this allows for rapid instant switching of beam types. This light here has 5000K Cree XPL HDs on one channel, and Osram CSLNM1, or W1, LEDs on the other channel. Channel 1 provides a very nice floody beam for wide area lighting, while switching to channel 2 provides a more intense beam, which has great long range throw. These lights run Toykeeper's Anderl 2 firmware, which is already set up for easy channel switching and tint ramping without affecting normal operation. While the light is on, press three times and hold on the last press. The switching version will instantly switch channels, while the ramping version will smoothly transition channels as the button is held down. A quick double press will jump to the maximum available output with respect to the current channel setting. By default, Andril uses automatic memory, and however the light is set will be memorized and recalled when the light is shut off and turned back on again. The tint wrapping model has another cool trick up its sleeve. If the button is held after the light reaches the end of the channel ramp, it will enable a special mode that automatically changes the temperature alongside the main brightness ramp. This happens at both ends, so the light can either start warm while the light is low, and get cooler as the output increases, or it can be set to do the opposite, and get warmer as the brightness increases. Simply repeating the three presses and a hold will revert back to manual tint ramping. Any combination of LEDs and either firmware version can be selected while purchasing, so you can pretty much order whatever configuration works best for your needs. The product listing for this new D4S V2 has tons of options available, so you can go crazy and put together whatever you want. The new driver also allows for a lighted switch to be used on the D4S V2, which is a very nice feature that wasn't available before. While this dual channel setup does allow for some very cool new possibilities, there are a couple of downsides you should be aware of. Because there are only two emitters per group, each channel will only be able to put out a bit over 2000 lumens with very efficient LEDs, and the lack of FET control for all LEDs will greatly reduce the maximum possible output for turbo. This does mean the light won't heat up much, which is actually really nice, but it's definitely not the hot rod that the more standard MSR lights can be. The good news is that the output is fully regulated, so it is fairly efficient and has consistent output even at the highest levels. If the light is loaded with the channel switching firmware, only one channel will be able to run at a time, so this light won't get close to the output of the standard version, and unfortunately the beams cannot be combined to complement each other. So, unless the instant switching is particularly valuable to you, the ramping version may be the better option, as it is more versatile. This new driver still uses the same microcontroller and the same flashing pads as the other MSRs, so it can be reflashed just as easily. Purchasing the flashing kit is highly recommended, as their firmware is still fairly new and is still in active development. Toykeeper, the developer, is currently working to improve the power delivery and add new features, so the flashing kit will allow you to keep the lights up to date with current software releases. As it stands, the tint ramping version is designed to maintain its output regardless of the selected temperature, even when set to turbo. This means that the maximum possible output in this version of Andoral is reduced to about 130 out of the normal 150, which allows the light to maintain 100% output regardless of tint setting. However, there is a future update which will allow for the light to be pushed all the way up to the maximum possible level, with the two channels adding upon each other. This means that tint ramping at the max output will also change the brightness, going from 100 to 200% output. There are a couple more updates coming, such as more resolution on both ends of the channel ramping range, and a general evening out of the power delivery for more consistency. 
Right now, the lights should ship with either the new D4S V2 tint ramping or tint switching builds, which will also be available to download from Toykeeper's site for flashing onto the lights. There also exists a build which allows for FET control on one channel, but this should be used with care. Again, it is highly recommended to purchase the flashing kit along with the light to stay updated with the latest firmware. If you can't be bothered to reflash your lights, then you'll probably be fine with the existing firmware, which is fully functional and still very good. However, it will probably be best to wait a bit more for some updates to be released.